this patient reported to us after six weeks of surgery and was referred to me for explantation of the IOL. And when I saw that the IOL was freshly implanted, I decided to demonstrate a very, very simple method of explantation of such IOLs, especially a method which will be very handy for beginner surgeons who do not have access to fancy tools, IOL cutters or uh, other advanced surgical techniques. So, you will notice I proceed by first of all demarcating and identifying the IOL. Now, in case this IOL was too much opacified, I would have used a tripon blue, which would have helped me to differentiate between the uh, opacified capsular axis and the IOL. And uh, in my other videos in the playlist, you will notice that uh, in a couple of situations, using a dye in these situations is very helpful. Now, I have proceeded by making two side ports and uh, instilled uh, viscoelastic in the center. Now, we start by actually differentiating and separating the anterior part of the capsule overlap over the IOL first. Because if you do not do this, uh, then the whole capsular bag can be compromised. So, we use two hand technique of uh, pushing viscoelastic from one side and then using a blunt instrument to isolate and demarcate or probably dissect the capsular axis from the edges of the IOL. And once that is done, we slowly extend the dissection across the IOL edge into that area where there could be some adhesions between the anterior capsule and the posterior capsule. It is very, very important to do this uh, separation before you open the wound because in case you, you have not been able to find that demarcation line between the anterior and the posterior capsule beyond the IOL edge, you could be in a little tricky situation. So, I realize then since the cataract surgery has been done as told by the patient around 6 weeks. So, once I have been able to separate that area, now the second step is to break the adhesions between the haptic and the capsule. Now, this usually is the most tricky part. The part of the haptic sometimes could be caught in the periphery. So, first of all, before you even start pulling the lens out, you have to make sure you are able to rotate the lens at least beyond 30 to 60 degrees. So, it has to be done in a gradual manner, the dialing movement. So, you will notice I first make an effort, then a coupling effect from the opposite side. Do not try and rotate the lens from one side or one side of the haptic all in one go. You could end up breaking the zonules. So, make a rotation on one side and then make rotation on the other side. Once I was sure that I have been able to break the adhesion, so I de-enclavate one haptic from one side. The area which moved freely ensured that the anterior and posterior capsular adhesion on that haptic are broken. Now, now, again, I could see that I went behind the IOL haptic and I am slowly trying to dislodge it and break the adhesions from the capsular bag. The same movement is actually done at the same time from the opposite side. So, each time I try and rotate the haptic on one side, for a coupling effect, I repeat the same movement on the opposite side. If all the forces are exerted on one side of the haptic, we could have an asymmetric pull and the non-coupling effect could end up breaking the zonules in that area. You have to ensure you keep instilling viscoelastic inside because if the anterior chamber is flattened, the whole capsular back complex will try and vault upwards and cause problems. <clears throat> you can do this step even through the side port in case you want to be very uh, sure. You will notice that I keep instilling viscoelastic. I am actually making sure that the area of part of the haptic which is stuck into the anterior and posterior capsule is free. I am getting an indication that now since the lens is started rotating, it definitely makes sense that the haptic on the lower part of your screen is now slowly getting dislodged and is disengaged from the anterior and posterior capsule. Now, once that is done, I have de-enclavated the haptic. 
So if you notice, first I de-enclavated the superior part of the haptic from the part of that part of the anterior and posterior capsular adhesion. And once that was done, then I de-enclavated the lower part of the haptic. And all this was done in a coupling manner by loosening the haptics alternatively. One part of the haptic, one side was loosened and then the other part was loosened. Now, since the IOL has been delivered into the interior chamber, now I am using a very, very simple method to demonstrate this. I could have created a scleral tunnel to remove this lens, which I have been uh, more astigmatic neutral. So, I am just using a 5.25 millimeter keratome, which can be very, very easily available. So, once that keratome is making the incision, now I have a nearly 5.5 millimeter of uh, wound and there you see, since it is a foldable lens and it slowly compresses as it comes out of uh, probably 5.25 millimeter plus incision very, very easily. When you are pulling, make sure that you hold the optic of the lens and you pull out. Sometimes if the wound is tighter and you pull it by the haptic, you can end up breaking the haptic, leaving a sharp edge of the haptic optic junction, which could cause uh, damage to the endothelium or even the posterior capsule. And there you see the opacified IOL is out. This is a very, very simple methodology of removing this particular lens. Now, once this lens is taken off, all I need to do is introduce the new lens inside. And I will just want to put a single suture, interrupted suture in the center of the incision. Now, a 5.25 millimeter incision, if I give a, a suture of an adequate tightness, which shall one suture in the center of the wound will give me an approximate 2.9 approximately millimeter of a wound. So, from a 2.8 millimeter wound, which was extended to 5.25, and then putting a suture bang in the center, I have again created two compartments of the wound. And uh, this one single suture, a lot of times, is good enough to do the job for us. Another thing is that if you are an expert at putting interrupted sutures, you can actually do this uh, limbal technique of IOL explant and yet have a minimal or negative induced. Now, I am using a coaxial uh, uh, irrigation aspiration to remove the viscoelastic. Otherwise, you can actually suture the wound in the center and use bimanual also, a bimanual irrigation aspiration to remove the viscoelastic from this wound. And as you can see that even a 5.25 millimeter is fairly, fairly secure and tight wound. But just to control the astigmatism, you will notice that I give one single interrupted suture in the center. Make sure that you do not over tighten this suture because if you over tighten this suture, you may induce astigmatism. The purpose of this suture actually is just to give a safe uh, closure to the wound and dividing a larger wound into two compartments, which are relatively safe and effective. So, decide to make one single suture in a larger wound. This has made the wound tight and secure. I proceed to do the irrigation aspiration with a bimanual irrigation aspiration. This has made the chamber much more stable because I realized using a coaxial uh, IA for removal of viscoelastic was causing a lot of fluctuations of the chamber. Now, we just uh, hydrate the side ports and we have a tight and secure wound and the patient was 6 by 6 parts after 3 days of surgery. Thank you.